Hello and welcome to this information video on the Bronze Duke of Edinburgh Award. Normally, by the time students get to Year 9, we've been able to meet them all on Junior Camp. We'd also normally run this session face to face, so you'd get a chance to meet us. However, as we're running this session virtually, we thought it would be a good idea to put faces to some of the names that you'll hear this evening. Firstly, we've got Christopher Lucas, Head of Outdoor Learning. Myself, Jake Blum. I work alongside Christopher and part of my responsibility is the overseeing of the Duke of Edinburgh Award at Trafferis. We've also got Martin Bennell. Mr Bennell is in the first aid room every day till 2pm. From then he joins Christopher and myself in the outdoor learning department. We are very fortunate that the wider outdoor learning team consists of over 25 external adult volunteers that help to make our programmes happen. They have a huge range of backgrounds from senior leadership roles in schools to retired and serving police officers as well as qualified doctors and paramedics. We would not be able to run our programmes if it wasn't for this team of volunteers who give up their weekends and holidays to enable more students to partake in our programmes. Our aim for this presentation is to make sure that everyone knows what the Duke of Edinburgh Award is, how bronze fits in and the different sections that make up the award. We can also give you some different ideas for the different sections. I'll talk in detail about the expedition section and the various training sessions that we run before the expedition. We feel that it's important to talk to you about the safety procedures that we have in place for our expeditions. It's important that you have an understanding of the risks involved with adventure and how we mitigate against these risks. I'll cover the cost of the Bronze Award and finally talk about the next steps as students embark on their Bronze DV programme. The DV Award was established by the Duke of Edinburgh in 1956. It's an award that allows young people to take part in a range of different activities that help not only their communities but also allows them to develop their own personal skills. There are three different levels to the DV Award. Bronze, which students start when they're in Year 9. Silver, which students can start in Year 10. And Gold, which can be started in Year 12. Each level takes longer to achieve and is harder to work towards, but results in an enormous sense of pride when completed. DV is a great award to have on your CV and looks good for prospective employers. Previous participants have found that it can be a great talking point when they are having interviews with universities or for jobs. At all levels of the DV award, there are four different sections that make up the award. At gold level, there's an additional residential section. These different levels give a huge breadth to personal development and all four of them are equally as important. Participants must complete a volunteering section, something that helps another individual or their community, work on an area of fitness, develop a skill and complete an expedition. At bronze level, for each of the volunteering physical and skill, participants must take part in the activity for three months. They must complete one of the sections for an additional three months. We recommend that participants choose the sections that they enjoy the most and do this for the six months. The volunteering section of the award is designed to allow participants to help make a difference to other people's lives. There are lots of different activities that can be done. Volunteering time in a charity shops or helping to coach a sports team can all be counted. Participants could also help an elderly neighbour. It's important to note that volunteering cannot be undertaken from a commercial organisation. Saturday jobs that students are completing for no money doesn't count. The physical section is for participants to focus on themselves and participate in some kind of fitness. Playing as part of a football team or working on an individual sport all count. Essentially, anything that gets you out and doing something physical can count. The skill section allows students to find something they want to work on. There are lots of different skills that participants can work on. Because of the pandemic, there are also lots of different, often free, courses that are running online. With all three of these sections, students will often find that they are already doing something that can be worked into their lives. A key part is to find an assessor for each section. This cannot be a family member and should be someone who has a bit of knowledge about the specific activity. All participants will receive an eDV account. Once they log on, they'll get sent a welcome pack. This, can pack. this pack contains a template for assessor reports. We're having a lot of assessor reports rejected by DV because they're not in the correct format. 
when getting an assessor, please ensure that they send the report in either the sheet in the welcome pack or the best way is via the assessor portal. This can be found by googling DOV assessor portal. Once students have got an eDOV account, they can either log on on a computer or using the app. The best way for students to log on is to use the app and it keeps them up to date with their award and monitors their progress. Students will also receive a discount card that can be used for getting discount on kit for expeditions. eDOV is a way of logging all of the different activities that they're doing and their timescales and submitting assessor reports. It's becoming a busy year with lots going on. The reliance for achieving the award must be on the students. There are lots of others around that are taking part in either bronze or other levels. Speak to those to see what they're doing and how they might be able to help. We currently have over 400 students on EDV at Newquich Ferris. We can't be looking individually at each student constantly. We're more than happy to help and check students when they ask questions but it's down to the students to monitor their progress and come and see us if they need help. Please do come and see us if, we ha if you have any questions. We're very fortunate to be moving into a new um, building for us which is in the old wave up near the hex and students can come and find us in our base camp we're calling it. All bronze students will also be added to a bronze DOV teams group. Ask your questions through the teams group or feel free to email us on ntol at treferris.net. Remember, it's the student's award and not the parents. The expedition section is the one that most students will be looking forward to or think about when we talk about DOV. It is also the section that we provide students with the most support for at Treferris. At bronze level, students will complete a two-day practice expedition and a two-day qualifying expedition. We offer a walking expedition where students camp overnight. The expedition will provide students with lifelong memories and equip them with a huge amount of skills and experiences that they will talk about forever. For bronze at Ferris, we have a program that leads to students being successful with their expeditions. This starts with a series of in-school training sessions. Students then complete a two-day, one-night practice expedition. This takes place in the local area and students walk with a leader and cover all the skills needed. These range from navigation to hill skills and campcraft. Students then complete two route planning sessions. These are compulsory and are for students to plan their own qualifying expedition. This allows students to work on completing the expedition the way they want to. Finally, the qualifying expedition takes place on the Rosemalund Peninsula. This is again a two day, one night expedition. Students are self-sufficient for this, with a staff meeting groups at different checkpoints. The dates for this year's expeditions and training is as follows. We run a significant programme at Ferris, and as a result, have no flexibility with the dates that we set. Due to the anticipated size of the Bronze cohort, we will run two expeditions, Bronze 1 and Bronze 2. Each, each expedition will complete just one practice and one qualifying expedition, Students will not be required to take part in both sets of practice or qualifying expeditions. We have significant numbers across all programmes we run and the summer term is our busiest time of year. Because of this, we have to be strict on the deadlines we set. This ensures that we get everything prepared and sorted in preparation for a series of successful expeditions. Our supervision and safety framework is reliant on teams working and following instructions. This not only keeps everyone safe, but also leads to a successful and happy expedition. For the qualifying expedition, we are required to use external assessors. The rules for an assessment are set by DOV. We cannot change them. We have a large kit store of waterproofs, rucksacks, tents, stoves, etc. As a result, there is no need to rush out and buy all of the kit. The most important bit of kit is sturdy footwear. There are several local outdoor shops where you can go and try on different walking boots. I wouldn't recommend buying very expensive ones as they are at an age where they are still growing. It's important that these boots are well broken in so that they are comfy when the students are out on expeditions. A key part of the expedition is what we call the degunge. This is the cleaning of all the kit that students use on the expedition. This must be done at the end of the trip. We recommend students wait until they have completed this before they start calling for a lift. 
This prevents parents waiting around too long. As most of you should have hopefully seen by now, our consent forms are all online now. Please make sure that these are filled out as soon as possible, both the NTOL consent form and the DOV enrolment form. Please put any medical details on these so that we are fully aware and prepared before the expedition. If details change between now and the expeditions, please get in touch with us so we can amend the details. A condition of the qualifying expedition is that students are self-sufficient. This means that we supervise the students remotely. It is important that you, as parents and carers, are fully aware of what this means and how the students are looked after whilst they are out. Remote supervision is, a, is great for the students as it allows them to have these adventures alongside their friends and peers without an adult constantly overlooking them. However, an important factor is we must prioritise safety and any behaviour that puts the safety of the students or my volunteers or staff at risk will not be tolerated. Students that compromise the safety will be removed from the expedition. To allow us to move to a, remo to a remote supervision model and for it to be effective and safe, we as staff have a great knowledge of the area that we are operating in and have a highly trained staff and volunteer volunteer team around. We know that students have received the most appropriate training to allow them to safely manage and look after themselves. We have a robust emergency procedure system in place that every single person on the expedition is made aware of and how it works. An additional safety measure that we put in place is trackers. Each group will have a tracker. This is not so we can spy on groups but gives us an additional layer of safety. They work off mobile signal. So as you can imagine, they don't always ping a signal in Cornwall. I would encourage you to please get in contact with me to discuss remote supervision if you have any concerns. An additional and key element of our safety is ensuring that all students and parents and carers are aware of all this, the information about the expeditions. We will communicate with emails and all students will be in the Bronze DOV Teams group. It is important that students keep checking this for the information. If you have any other questions, then there are lots of students around, either in Year 9 or in higher years who are doing DOV. If not, come and see us in the NT Outdoor Learning Base Camp. We run programmes on Mondays and Thursdays, so we're only in the building on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Our new building is up near the Hex, or email us or give us a ring at school. We are very fortunate to be able to subsidise the cost of the expeditions. This is to allow the award to be open to all in the year group. To enrol students, we ask that a minimum of £29 is paid on parent pay by Monday the 10th of January. The contribution of £65 covers the cost of expeditions. All staffing costs are costed separately. If 100 students take part, then the cost breaks down as follows. We are fortunate that the school continues to subsidise this, keeping the parental contribution at £65. If cost is a potential barrier to taking part in bronze, then please get in touch with me and we will see what we can do. To sum up, it is a student's award and they must take the lead on it. There are four sections to the award, not just the expedition. Make sure that you are working on all four sections and get these onto EDV. Doing DOV should not become a burden. Most sections can be worked into your normal lifestyle. Take the deadlines we set seriously and the DOV rules cannot be changed by us. And please make sure to thank our volunteers. We would not be able to run these programmes without them. So, next steps. Make sure that both the forms have been completed and payment is made by the 10th of January. The sooner you get the forms and payment in, the better. Work out what you want to do for the volunteering, physical and skill section and get started with them. Make sure you find an assessor for these and get all of the information uploaded onto EDV. And ask us questions if you need them. I hope that this has provided all the information that you needed and that you are as excited to start bronze as we are. Please get in touch if you have any questions at all and we will do our best to answer them. Thank you.